humanity is constantly pushing back its limits. The first steps on the moon open the door to the wildest of dreams. We could be on Mars by the mid-2020s, certainly. The world scientific community has taken on an incredible challenge. To set foot on the red planet. Fire. It's probably somewhere between 40 to 100 years uh, to achieve a, a fully self-sustaining civilization on Mars. In the foreseeable future, the greatest adventure of all time will see humans set off towards Mars. The success of such an expedition depends on extraordinary preparation. Everything started on August 5th, 2012, eight months after leaving Earth and having traveled 65 million kilometers. The rover Curiosity entered the Martian atmosphere. We are decelerating. Dynamics phase, come back again with uh, wrist mode dynamics. We've lost tones from Earth at this time. This is expected. Uh, We're continuing on Odyssey telemetry. Stable. New UHF is good. Touchdown confirmed. We're safe on Mars. Got thumbnails. is so far away. It takes six months for us to reach it, while Apollo reached the moon in just four days. The trajectory calculations have to be perfect. The path which Mars follows around the sun means that our distance from it varies. At its closest, the orbit of the red planet is 60 million kilometers from us. At its furthest, 400 million kilometers. Appointments between Earth and Mars can only be arranged every two years. This mission will need three years in space, one year for the trip itself, and two years on Mars while awaiting the next available window for returning to Earth. And yet, Scientists already see themselves on Mars. A European team is carrying out extravehicular activity tests in a training spacesuit. Video camera in place, biomonitoring. Installed, telemetry data, okay. Capcom EV1 ready for EVA. 
We are ready to go. Okay, understand. So Capcom are now at point, uh, 2.1. Copy that, EV1. Okay, let's go. Capcom from EV1. And we walk to the left and face north direction to the low hills. Copy that, EV1. Capcom EV1, we arrived at site C, the rail, where you go along the rail. EV1, you have now been on EVA for 26 minutes. Okay, I've come from EV1, I lost communication, but I understood that I was in the suit for 26 minutes. Hardly 30 minutes into the exercise, and the astronaut is already feeling the first signs of tiredness. The spacesuit weighs nearly 40 kilograms, exactly the weight the astronaut would feel once Martian gravity is taken into account. Capcom EV1, I'm starting 360 degree video scanning now. Copy that. EV1, just wanting to let you know that you're closing in on 50 minutes in the suit. I'll make it. Less than an hour into the experiment, and the astronaut is close to collapsing. The engineers will need to considerably lighten the next generation of suits before envisaging five to six hour exercises on Mars. Thanks. Just like in the desert of Rio Tinto, the aptly named Red River, the surface of Mars is unbelievably dry. Why undertake such a perilous journey to this inhospitable planet? In what was once an ocean, man is looking for signs of life, which may have appeared when liquid water flowed on Mars at the time of its origins. What happened? Four and a half billion years ago, our solar system was born out of a nebula, a cloud of gas and dust. Around the sun, matter came together to form planets. Mars and the Earth both came from the same beginnings which were conducive to life on Earth. At this period, Mars was still the twin of our planet. fantasized over the only red dot in the firmament. In the 19th century, the astronomer Schiaparelli even thought he had discovered on its surface a system of canals built by Martians. Images from the first probes shattered any illusions about extraterrestrial life similar to our own. In reality, the surface of the red planet bears the scars of a cataclysmic past. Valles Marineris, a gigantic slash near the equator, is 4,000 kilometers long. Mars has the highest volcanoes in the solar system, like Olympus Mons, three times higher than Everest. Millions of pieces of data collected since the 1960s reveal a cold emptiness of rocks and dunes battered by sandstorms. Clouds of dust sometimes obscure the sky for months. The average temperature is minus 70 degrees Celsius, and in the rock can be found numerous signs which suggest water once flowed. Originally, its iron nucleus created a magnetic field which shielded it from devastating interstellar dust. Beneath this dense atmosphere, liquid water covered the surface at the very moment when life was appearing in the oceans of the Earth. 
But 3.7 billion years ago, the planet Mars cooled down and lost its magnetic field. Defenseless against solar wind, its atmosphere disappeared, swept out into space, carrying with it all liquid forms of water, the ideal solvent for organic matter. On Mars, time stopped, preserving the geological memory of the origins of its twin. The lost archives of the Earth are hidden on the red planet. There lies the real reason for going to explore. For five years, Curiosity has been scrutinizing the Gale Crater, looking for the history of Mars and the Earth. The rover soon uncovered clay, irrefutable proof of a slow change occurring in volcanic rock due to liquid water. One piece of Curiosity's equipment was responsible for this major discovery, the ChemCam laser, under the responsibility of a French team based at the CNES. For five years, the geologist Violaine Sauter and the astrophysicist Sylvestre Maurice have spent their nights on Earth with their eyes fixed on Mars in close contact with NASA. I think ideally we would want to say we, we would like to have it be on a, on a larger flat stab that doesn't look like it has a lot of um, fractures. Wait a minute. We want to jeopardize drill salt one. Anyone else have a different opinion? Diana, we were thinking um, about maybe choosing another target closer to the, um, to the rover because in terms of ChemCam, the 905 and so on are quite far away. We have an hour and 45 minute science block, so we okay. should have plenty of time for some Yes, to do that. Cam. Okay, thanks. The Jet Propulsion Laboratory centralizes the data from all of Curiosity's instruments, controlled by different teams around the world. NASA determines the daily route map of the rover and even uses virtual reality and holograms to allow the engineers to operate alongside Curiosity as if they were on Mars. What we do often is someone will say, you know, I'm interested in this rock and we'll say, is it this one? And they'll say, no, it's the one to the right. And then <laughs> you'll have this funny conversation where you're all trying to figure out what it is you're talking about. Uh, but with this program, you can basically have your avatar point to a rock you're interested in, and then everyone else's avatars can go run and see what it is. So while it is really cool, I think it is actually really helping us make better decisions about how to operate the rover based on the new information that we can just visualize so much better about the surface of Mars. At the CNES, Violaine and Sylvestre await Curiosity's new route map with fingers crossed that their targets will be chosen by NASA. Today's planning, we are expecting a battery state of charge at handover of 95.7%. Okay, so here are some of the CamCam -cam targets you're going to hear about in uh, today's plan. Here are our targets. Um, this is the it's our targets which are appearing. Our targets have been chosen. Hatima, Maulilo, Nguali, and Orapa. So this is ChemCam. Uh, we would like yes, a small update in the ChemCam calibration target observation. So the first one. Could you please check the waypoint box, uh, which is below? Yes, you can see it here. Yeah, this one. So this one. Okay. Yes. Thank you. ChemCam. ChemCam is go. No refinement. Originally intended to be used for two years, the rover is still working five years later. Its mission is a success. It has proved that Mars was once an inhabitable planet. Future generations of robots will look for traces of life on Mars. For this, NASA is already building a new, ultra-sophisticated machine, MSL 2020, with revolutionary tools. The SuperCam will trace organic molecules, the MOXIE will capture CO2 and convert it into oxygen in preparation for human missions. The coring drill will be able to drill down up to two meters and collect samples never before reached. The Sherlock spectrometer will detect inhabitable zones. This robot will not only seek to analyze Mars, but also minutely prepare for man's arrival.
Tomorrow, other rovers will be the indispensable teammates of the first astronauts on the surface of Mars. A European team is developing one of these new generation assistants. Now try to move forward. Try to stop it, search for the dead spot. Backwards is no problem, huh? Yeah, backward is nice. Just play, play around and enjoy. Radio-controlled movement-guided robots already exist, but YEMO 1.0 is the very first design to collaborate with an astronaut. Yeah. Using this Martian prototype, the reliability of the gestural control is tested before being integrated into the spacesuit. Can you walk, uh, Martin? Can you walk with the robot? You can try it, yeah. But you have to... You have to yeah, yeah, yeah. But it's not, it's not painful at all. You're having fun, actually, right? Yes, I do. <laughs> Thank you. You're welcome. How is it moving robots with magic hands? I like having magic hands. Yeah, it's <laughs> fine. Eh? <laughs> During missions, these artificial intelligence robots will be able to carry tools, warn the rest of the team if other astronauts experience difficulties, fall or are unwell, and even act as trailblazers to explore inaccessible areas. A foretaste of the future. The Mars mission will require international cooperation. Europe, China and the United States. But as with the moon, it will above all require political willingness. For me, the space program has always captured an essential part of what it means to be an American. I believe we can send humans to orbit Mars and return them safely to Earth. And a landing on Mars will follow. Most of the things we want to do in, in exploring Mars, getting humans to Mars, it's too much for any one nation to do. So um, if, if Elon has a vision for getting humans to Mars, um, it, it's, it's another idea that we will all evaluate and determine what, what's the best way to do it, if not multiple ways. Elon Musk, the visionary boss of SpaceX, bypassed protocol when he joined the major players. Robert Subrin, the head of the American Mars Society, even considers him to be the only one capable of bringing off the Martian dream. We could be on Mars by the mid-2020s, certainly. The reason why I think Musk can do it is because he's not looking for an excuse of why not to do it. He's not looking for a, a snow day. I think there are really two fundamental paths. History is going to bifurcate along two directions. One path is we stay on Earth forever, um, and then there will be some eventual extinction event. Uh, the alternative is to become a space-faring civilization and a multi-planet species, which uh, I hope you would agree that is the right way to go. Yes? <laughs> yeah. If you have 100 people per ship, that's 10,000 trips. From the point at which the first go ship goes to Mars, it's probably somewhere between 20 to 50 um, total Mars rendezvous. So it's, it's, it's probably somewhere between 40 to 100 years uh, to achieve a, a fully self-sustaining civilization on Mars. Elon Musk plans to send a million people to a Martian base. His essentially economic colonization strategy is both simple and revolutionary. Reduce expenditure by reusing launchers and maintain average costs which could attract financial support from a large number of volunteers. accessible in Musk's vision. 
But before launching spacecraft carrying 100 people per flight, NASA first needs to work on a rocket capable of sending four astronauts towards the red planet. Spin it and check each blade. In this giant wind tunnel, the behavior of a model spaceship loaded with electronic captors is minutely analyzed during the most critical phases between takeoff and leaving the atmosphere. The extraordinary size of the launcher forces the engineers to totally rethink its aerodynamics. Okay. All right. So let me know when you're ready. Smoke's coming on. Let me know when you're ready for drive start. Copy. Pressure's at point three point five on cue. That's fine. You can stay here. I'm at three point two right now. Cue. Take the model up to. 46.5, please. 46.5. Elevation at 46.5. Thank you. The more we know, the better, because we test as we fly, and fly what we test. Let's go and bring the model back down to 10.5, please. These vehicles experience uh, extreme conditions on the ride to orbit. Aerodynamic environments that are challenging, thermal environments, a noise and acoustic environments that can shake and vibrate the vehicle and, and literally rip avionics systems apart. And so we're learning all that we can to design this vehicle to be safe to uh, launching our crew on exploration missions beyond Earth orbit to missions uh, to the vicinity of the moon, Mars, and perhaps beyond. The test is complete. These sorts of trials are repeated to the point of submitting the replica of the launcher to supersonic speeds, equivalent to those experienced in the highest layers of the Earth's atmosphere. The whole country is already involved in the building of this giant rocket. A crazy race against the clock has begun. Two, one, fire. In Utah, the powerful boosters which will propel it through the Earth's atmosphere for two minutes are tested. These alone will provide a force of 14,000 tons, three quarters of what is necessary. The Space Launch System, or SLS, will be the most powerful rocket in the world, the hope of all human exploration. Nearly 130 tons of payload, 120 meters high, from the LC-39 launch pad, the very place from which Armstrong, Collins, and Aldrin took off 50 years ago, the SLS will take flight with four astronauts and supplies for three years. It will reach the stratosphere at the supersonic speed of Mach 24, approximately 30,000 kilometers per hour, in just eight minutes. Leaving behind the atmosphere, the vessel will leave our planet and plunge into the sidereal blackness of the cosmos. While the Americans are directly targeting the Red Planet, the strategy of the old continent is different. The European Space Agency is working on a project for a permanent lunar base. Freed from the perturbations of the Earth's atmosphere, a telescope could look even further into the universe. Numerous scientists would take exile in space in order to apprehend autonomous life for long months. Basically, a first form of colonization. 
and this fabulous training ground would allow real condition testing of all the equipment which would subsequently leave for Mars. One of the major issues to be overcome in planetary exploration is gravitational differences. On Earth, scientists are working on this question around the clock. The team at COMEX are developing a tool which is revolutionary in the domain of astronaut training. Gandolfi is the name of this unique spacesuit capable of simulating different gravities. All the systems associated with the spacesuit are put to the test. Robot, tablet, communications, remote gestural control, image feedback, and security. If the last phase of this project, baptized moonwalk, succeeds, Gandolfi could soon enter the training program for European astronauts. down, divers subject the spacesuit to numerous simultaneous exercises under the directions of the control center based in Brussels, 1,200 kilometers away. So now they are in the zodiac. In precisely the way that communication is established between the Earth and the Moon. FYI, they're preparing to put the diver astronaut in the water. OK, copy. This team of specialists in industrial deep sea diving has given this spacesuit exceptional properties. It restricts the movements of astronauts in the way a spacesuit does, thanks to a system of jacks, and makes it possible to simulate underwater one sixth of the Earth's gravity, like on the Moon, one third like on Mars, or zero like in space. EV1, this is MCC for a voice check. Can you read me? Can you read me? Can you remove the voice speakers? How do you read me? We read you 554. EV1, you are okay to move towards the robot. Copy that, sir. Base, I am about to go to the robot to operate point to point to. I uh, am walking around the sensing area, which is approximately 10 meters. He's just arrived next to the robot. The visibility is very bad, maybe not more than uh, 3 meters on my side. Today, I am about to control the rover and to move back to the lunar module with the test display. Is this correct? Correct. Yes, correct. Okay, the rover video is on. Amazing. Base for EV1. Base for EV1. I have no controlling the rover with the jet display, but it's oh. moving at a very slow rate. Very slow rate of maybe one meter per minute. MCC, do you copy? EV1 for MCC, I hear you 554. We are uh, monitoring you on the Hammett camp. Please take close up for the scientists. There are a uh, yes. little number of uh, little rocks, purple rocks. I repeat, purple rocks. Yes, he is now describing the area. 
MCC copy. MCC copy. Please uh, put a sample on the rover. MCC copy one. I understood that I should collect the sample. Is this correct? Correct. Conditions have deteriorated. We're stopping. Yeah, stop now. Yeah, we're stopping. Go down and give them a hand. We're stopping. The team has to interrupt the test. It has become windy, and it would be too dangerous to continue with all the equipment. On the way to Mars, they walked on the moon again. Gandolfi still needs a few adjustments. A meeting is arranged in Cologne in the astronauts' temple. No, Jack Schmidt having a few problems. How is it possible to operate in reduced gravity and okay, carry out very meticulous tasks in a cumbersome spacesuit? The first astronauts learned this at the risk of their lives. A simple fall could have been deadly if their face mask cracked on the ground. We concur, John. Comex has clearly found the solution to this problem. Gandolfi is truly adapted to all gravities, but this spacesuit has not yet been included in the ESA's program. We need a cable binary, yeah. It's not enough. This final test in the pool could open the doors to the great Mars expedition. So the objective of the activity today is to uh, perform an uh, underwater simulation uh, of uh, spacewalk uh, on the moon uh, and to test how Gandolfi is enhancing the, the realism of the, of the simulation uh, with uh, the constraint and the suit uh, movement limitation. I will be the EV astronaut on the moon. Peter will guide me through the, through the steps to be done as we would do in a normal EVA and we do it in the one-six of gravity uh, buoyancy uh, simulation. So you store the crew lock back and the tool carrier now. Okay. Copy Peter. Storing the crew lock bag. And the cut. It work. So Peter, uh, just tell me what just tell me what is the next step. Okay, the next step is to open the sample container. Okay. I open the crew lock bag. And there. Everything is open, checking the inside. I see I have the, the two markers, I have the two some, something bags, everything looks good. Okay, so you have identified already some object to sample on the side, so retrieve marker one with the label BS11. Okay, 
Let me check first uh, the work site. Oh, okay, copy that. Erwin, could you please make a short statement about the buoyancy uh, in terms of simulation? The buoyancy is perfect, look at that. Yoo-hoo! I'm uh, working on the moon. I don't know what it looks like for you guys, but for me, it's awesome. It is beautiful, Erwin. Yeah, yeah, thank you. Okay, do you see it? I put the, the marker just in front of the sample and uh, the arrow is pointing to it. And oh. Okay, Avi. Could we do again a picture with the helmet camera and give a short okay. description of that side? Okay, I orient my, my lights on it and uh, I'll be stand by for the picture. Okay, excellent. So you can translate back with both the crew lock back and the tool carrier and go back to the suit port, please. Yeah, you see a uh, wolf on the moon, huh? Thanks a lot for the support, TV. You have done a great job. Thank you, Javier. Thank you for that nice EVA. Yeah, it was my pleasure. I think I had the better part here, the better view, and the better sensation with this uh, moonwalk. That's a great simulation. Even though it is now possible to train in any gravitational conditions, to reach Mars it will be necessary to solve an even more complex problem. How can the human body deal with the long-term effects of zero gravity? For the six months of the long journey towards Mars, the astronauts will be operating in the total weightlessness of the spatial void. After not having to deal with gravity for several months, the body forgets about terrestrial attraction. A DC-7 is illuminated. We are maneuvering counterclockwise, yes. Can you see the Earth? Yes. We all remember the images of astronauts after returning to Earth. Faces strained, riveted to the ground by their own weight, hardly able to stand. In what state will they be when they arrive on the Red Planet? This six-month journey in weightlessness towards Mars could have dramatic consequences. The heart is weakened. Bones become fragile, sometimes to the point of fracturing. At the Medes Space Clinic, volunteers remain lying down for two months, their heads lower than their feet, to reproduce the negative effects of weightlessness. A bit more. Stop. That's perfect. All right. They all undergo numerous tests before, during, and after this period of being confined to bed. Their proprioception is seriously affected. That is to say, their movements and spatial awareness become disrupted. By comparing all the data, the doctors hope to provide solutions for long-term space missions. At the end of 60 days, the volunteer is put back on his feet. The inactivity has weakened his heart rate, and he's lost four kilos of muscle. With his legs in a pressurized container to avoid a too violent drop in pressure, he is gently raised under the scrutiny of the reanimation doctors. The team checks his vital parameters as they wait for the first signs of fainting. Sudden loss of consciousness is the limit fixed by medical protocol for this test. Whereas certain volunteers only last out for three minutes, 
This one holds on for 18 minutes before reaching breaking point. Keep your eyes closed and don't move your head. Eyes closed. When you're ready. I'm ready. Finally, he undergoes a test of balance. Perfect. In rhythm. With each beep, head up, then down. He has lost awareness of the place of his own body in space, just like astronauts returning to Earth. Those who arrive on Mars in good health will be left to their own devices for two years with no incoming supplies. How can the Martian base be supplied with oxygen, water, and food when it will be impossible to take everything necessary with them? The key to this total autonomy is spirulina, a simple green microalgae capable of producing oxygen in large quantities, like here at the heart of a revolutionary recycling loop under tests in the Melissa II program. It takes waste from the astronaut, the exhaled CO2, urine, fecal matter, kitchen waste, etc and then slowly transforms it for use in plant growing. And it's these plants which will obviously provide food, tomatoes, beetroot, lettuce. But also, through photosynthesis, it will produce oxygen, capture CO2, and produce water. This is commonly known as an artificial ecosystem. We try to recreate a very confined miniature Earth inside a completely airtight container. The conditions are drastic. Like in a sterile chamber, nothing must contaminate or compromise the experience. How the compartments are assembled is controlled by the project engineers. The cyanobacteria are the main advantage, yeah. because they can react very fast. And yes. if you cultivate it's plants, a... the generation time will be yeah. several weeks. Yeah. So with cyanobacteria, it's probably in a few minutes. In a few you minutes, can you can have, uh, you can modulate really the production of oxygen, yeah. depending on the needs of the of the crew. And here is the crew. Rats inside an airtight container plugged into a spirulina bioreactor. All in perfect health. The potential of a system as extraordinary as this truly opens the way to multi-planetary exploration. This extraordinary microalgae from out of the water will make it possible for humans to live on Mars, the dry planet where nothing survives. Using this method, different greenhouse vegetables will eventually be able to feed astronauts, but also to produce water and oxygen by recycling the CO2 exhaled by the crew. So normally what you do, you continuously harvest and you can feed your astronaut a bit yeah, of daily, every day. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. But in terms of water balance, it's good huh? because they have produced around four liters a day. And an astronaut will need three liters, so we are, we are quite in the... So good enough in terms of water production? Well, we have to see the quality of the water, okay. but in terms of volume, yeah, it's okay. Breathing, drinking, eating, all indispensable, of course. But there's another obstacle for life in space. Exposure to cosmic rays given off by all the stars of the galaxy, the effects of which are as dangerous as radioactivity. It will be essential to have a shield to avoid having to hide in caves, sheltered from this mortal danger.
In the heart of Manhattan, architects specialized in space construction have come together to dream up the ideal Martian habitat. The constraints imposed by such a journey force them to invent incredibly creative and innovative solutions. We're going to Mars. <laughs> why, why would we go uh, if we cannot see? Why go there and live underground? Or why go there and have to share a small window with your crewmates when all you want to do is, is describe what you see? Having four people living for a year in you know, thousand square feet uh, in a cave is mentally a high risk. I see that it can be very thin mm -hmm. comparing to the rigorous. Yeah. We need only 20 centimeters to cover this habitat. We get the radiation shielding, ice is great for galactic rays, all yeah. of the thing. It's natural also light. Yeah. Natural, natural light. light. What's great about the ice is that it's going to affect the color temperature of this you know, uh, lighting, which we know to be about half of Earth. We know that the blue will also creates a sense of space, whereas warm lighting will just keep closing it down. So I think that there's really a, an interesting balance psychologically between the cool and the, and the warm um, sense of it. And we do know that there, there is water ice on Mars right. in tons, some areas. Tons of it. <laughs> yeah, tons of it. it will be necessary to build Martian dwellings from resources available on the planet. Rather than building a shield from rock, their brilliant idea is to sculpt the Martian ice, plentifully available beneath the surface by means of a 3D printer. Another fine day on Mars. You're right, John. The Mars Ice House dreamt up by these visionaries, took first prize in a NASA competition. It looks like something out of science fiction, but this concept is taken very seriously by space agencies as a means of protecting a future Martian base. The success of this fabulous expedition depends on symbiosis between engineers and these stargazing men and women inventing man's future in space. Beyond the exploit of arriving on the Red Planet, which humans will be able to stand this three-year exile, this Martian isolation? On the slopes of the Mauna Loa volcano, a handful of scientists have been living beneath a dome 11 meters in diameter, totally cut off from the rest of the world for the last year. NASA, in association with the University of Hawaii, is trying to determine the best profile for its future Martian crew. Sometimes shut in for days on end without even going out into the terrain, they're exposed on a daily basis to cognitive and emotional tests to analyze the impact of isolation on their mental health. These volunteers only communicate with their control center via email they have no direct contact with the outside world. They respect the true time delay for communication between Earth and Mars with a minimum of 40 minutes before receiving a reply. At the same time, they are each carrying out their own research program. Okay, so that's going to be our first Letrus. Um, it will not be much for the crew because it was just a test, but I think people would be happy to eat it anyway <laughs> after two months without fresh food. Um, actually, there is, as you can see, there is no soil. It's just a hydroponic setup. So if you have uh, water here with all the nutrients the plant need, um, and you can see the roots. That is simulated Mars. There's really no one up here but us. We're at about 8,000 feet above sea level. Spacesuits, the traditional kind. Big, heavy, white, cool looking. Our workshop, we do a lot of repairs. Keep the hab going. There's no hardware store here. We do it ourselves. Aha, our chief scientific officer. It's her day to cook. Hi. Hi. What's for lunch? 
Um, honestly, I don't know yet. <laughs> this is our chief engineer, Anjay. Howdy. <laughs> this is where a lot of the magic happens. This is the bio lab. All your basic stuff, lots of rocks. Lots and lots and lots and lots and lots of Mars rocks. Our second bathroom. We save our water. We keep our showers to less than three minutes and usually only once or twice a week. We've been amazingly good at water. And um, it's pretty good to know how much garbage we all generate and how much water we use because that's important for planning a Mars mission. How will they cope with such confinement when the Earth is no more than a glowing dot amongst the stars? Enough to send you mad. Thanks to the data collected over the years, the profile of the future Martian crew is becoming clear. A close-knit team, rather than a collection of individualities. They will need to deal with every situation together, whatever happens. Tomorrow, humans will undoubtedly live in houses made of ice or Martian rock, airtight, futuristic domes. They will produce their own oxygen and their own food. And beside them, robots will survey the surface of our solar system's fourth planet. Never has Mars been so close to the Earth.